My name is Albert. I'm the CEO of PowerFan.io, and today I'm going to talk about the future of hybrid stable coins and why Bitcoin, Ethereum, and USDC, not USDT, uh, backed hybrid decentralized stable coins are the future of this industry. And you can see my email here if you are curious and want to reach out. So, in conclusion, to give you the meat first for decentralization and the prevention of USDC assets getting frozen by some government entity or somewhere else, maybe their banks get frozen. Uh, we need a hybrid model that is trusted and transparent. And as you know, USDC is uh, you know, fully backed and audited uh, by Coinbase. The model I'm presenting right now is half, 50% backed by USDC and also 40% Bitcoin because Bitcoin has the largest market cap right now and no individual or a small group of people can try to knock down the price uh, more than 50% in one day like uh, happened with Luna. And in a bit I'll get into Luna a little bit and also a little bit of 9% uh, Ethereum as well uh, that will be backing this currency. And I'll tell you why it's a mix of Bitcoin and Ethereum and why we have an adjustable token of 1% of some other altcoin. So I'll talk a lot about this uh, first. So today's focus will be on the problems with centralized stable coins like USDC or USDT. Why Luna is a flawed model and why it was easy for the Luna price to be manipulated like that and become literally zero overnight and how a hybrid stable coin backed by both USDC that is fully transparent and audited and also Bitcoin and Ethereum to uh, solve both problems of decentralization and the trust issue with stable coins and algorithmic stable coins making it a hybrid model and the exact smart contract mechanisms and upgrades needed and one thing I want to tell you during this presentation, steal this idea, copy this idea, copy all the code. I will be open sourcing uh, this uh, exact problem of what Luna tried to solve is a very, very important problem in this industry. And it's not just me that uh, wants to solve it and you know hoard the market for stable coins. I think every smart contract developer out there in the world needs to at least put their feet into this industry of hybrid stable coins, algorithmic stable coins, and fully backed stable coins because having stable coins you know, is a way to make money sound, uh, make money decentralized, and a mix of between government currency, fiat currency, and the mix of decentralization and maybe uh, even central bank uh, digital currencies. Uh, having those decentralized aspects into everyday payment is a very very huge problem that will solve you know business everywhere so I believe you know copy this idea steal this idea copy this code I want all developers to try to come in here and solve this problem together and I don't have all the solutions so I just wanna put that up front before I start this presentation alright so I'm gonna open source all my code and the worst case scenarios like Bitcoin, Ethereum dropping, at the same time USDC, you know, Coinbase asset gets frozen by the governments, what will happen then? And also flaws in this model I'm presenting right now and I don't have all the answers. I know these flaws exist like Chainlink going down and all and Oracle's being hacked but I'm going to address them and also I would like other developers to come in here and try to solve this problem and steal this idea, copy this idea and make it yours and improve on it as well. So how to mitigate the risk, uh, my solutions that you know come out of my feeble brain, and the future of decentralized stable coins and why we need to keep experimenting. We need all the developers out there to improve on this code, open source their code, and make sure uh, this industry evolves and thrives with hybrid stable coins that are trustable. So the problem with centralized stable coins, uh, as you know, Doquan, the founder of Luna, said before, as well as many other people, and that's why Luna became a multi-billion dollar market uh, during before the crash, is because everyone knows the problem with centralized currency is what happens when the government freezes the bank that supposedly these uh, stable tokens 
are supposed to be relying on. Uh, what happens when Coinbase assets get frozen and uh, frozen by the government? What happens then? So that is the main problem. Decentralized algorithmic stable coins were going to solve. But the problem was there was algorithmic stable coins, the collateral token itself was not stable. Uh, that was the issue. So I have a little presentation from Seoul National University. I want to show you right now. So the big, big issue of uh, algorithmic stable coins. You probably know about Terra Luna, the crash. So many people are trying to kill this guy right now. A lot of uh, murder threats. So mm -hmm. the, that's what I heard on the oh, news yeah. um, and a lot of rumors. But the problem of uh, Luna is they try to make a UST stable coin, a stable coin. Mm -hmm. And they use the algorithms of this other token, the collateral token called Luna. And the Luna token was not stable. It crashed suddenly. And what happens then is people don't trust the UST stable coin anymore. So the algorithm doesn't work. So the UST price crashes too. So both are crashing. And that's the reason why uh, Luna uh, you know, became that kind of crash. And the problem with the collateral token Luna was there was no use case for that particular token. So if they had a good mainnet, ton of usage of the token itself of Luna, that Luna wouldn't crash as much, right? Because people have to buy Luna to use it and the market cap wasn't there. So they could, if they had a ride sharing apps with Luna, maybe OnlyFans, maybe gaming, gambling with Luna tokens, this uh, you know, problem would not occur. But Luna itself did not have that much value. Not many people using that network. So that's the main problem of algorithmic stable coins. And how Luna worked was, you know, one dollar worth of UST, that UST would be you know, one dollar worth of Luna. Say it's uh, maybe 0 0.1 Luna is one UST. And then suddenly the Luna price drops. And then that's when the marketing and people arbitraging, selling back and forth should prop up UST to be pegged to one dollar again. But that didn't happen when people lost trust of both tokens at the same time because the Luna price you know, went down. And another uh, example of a stable coin, but a different algorithm is fully backed stable coin. A different way of making stable coins is actually having US dollars in a bank account somewhere. So you have $1,000 in a bank account, it's fully audited like UST, that uh, USDC, that people uh, trust Coinbase to provide you know, the actual auditing, the actual documents that say, hey, we have real dollars here, nothing else. It's just $1 to one USDC. Uh, that's something that uh, Coinbase and another company, uh, Consensus, uh, built a USDC that uh, is very, very transparent, uh, hopefully. Um, but, and that's how uh, stable coins, they have different ways of building. So what is a better hybrid model of fully backed stable coin and maybe an algorithm of stable coin? This is the big question a lot of people have been asking. How do I make a, you know, something stable out of something not stable like Luna? Um, so is, there's these questions we got to give like bank run preventable stable coin, something that the collateral token itself like Luna has really good use case and very valuable as a killer app and can prevent um, crashes and tr build trust and at least 50% maybe backed by real cryptocurrency. Still, something like that failed as well. Another company that see, said they had 50% backed, I, um, you know, don't quote me on this, but was Iron Finance. Iron Finance was another token, an example of a stable coin. Uh, and you probably heard of a name, uh, a TV show called Shark Tank, right? Shark Tank is just okay. yeah, TV show with Mark Cuban where uh, billionaires invest in companies. And Mark Cuban was one of the big investors in this stable coin company called uh, Iron Finance. And that turned out uh, to have the same problem Luna did and they crashed as well. And Mark Cuban lost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So those are some of these uh, questions uh, we need to ask. I don't have all the answers, but it is a very, very big problem. And a bigger problem in the cryptocurrency space is uh, another stable coin called tether why luna failed uh like i said before you know the killer apps and the collateral token luna itself had no real value and not that stable and that's why we need that bitcoin model because you've seen 
arbitrage model as I've talked in the presentation. On the other side, USDC is an open source project and also uh, fully backed and audited and transparent. So we can trust the people who are trying their best, but at the same time, we can't trust the government that you know works with these centralized banks. So a better hybrid model of a fully backed stablecoin, bank run preventable stablecoin, you know, what can be there, collateral token with real use cases we talked about, and also at least 50% backed with you know, worst case scenarios in mind. So that hybrid approach is what I've been trying to work on with using smart contracts that are transparent and open source with all the source code open and using a fully transparent stablecoin like USDC that has been audited already. Uh, so 50% USDC and to mitigate that risk of centralization, 40% Bitcoin because Bitcoin has the largest market cap and is hard to shut down and 9% Ethereum just in case uh, what happens when suddenly Bitcoin goes down but Ethereum is still used. Ethereum still has the largest amount of companies building apps on top of Ethereum. So I believe Ethereum will go long term and having at least 9% uh, in Ethereum for that particular stablecoin backed uh, algorithmically and automatically is important. And there will be fluctuations in the price of USDC uh, backed stablecoins. So we need an adjustment token. Uh, in our case, we're gonna use PFAN token for this. And this adjustment token is going to make sure the US uh, Freedom USDC, this is what I'm gonna call this token, Freedom USDC token is going to stay $1. That's uh, what we're going to use for my company. But I want other companies to copy the smart contract code, maybe use their token for adjustment token and experiment, make, a, make it a little better. Maybe you want to experiment with maybe 15 different um, algorithm, algorithmic stable coins at the same time. Maybe you want to make it maybe 99% USDC. Who knows which model will work best. But in my model, I'm going to use 50% USDC, uh, that's what I believe will make this at least 50% uh, very, very stable and easy to peg to the dollar. At the same time, decentralized. So how a hybrid stablecoin backed uh, will solve these uh, certain problems compared to Terra Luna. So it's hard for, like I said, a few individuals to crash the market. It's a $50 billion market, even with a current crash already. Uh, today, you know, the time I took this uh, screenshot was a couple of days ago, and today is May 23rd, uh, 2022. And Ethereum also has a huge uh, market cap as well. Uh, a little less than half of Bitcoin, but still a huge market cap. And it's hard for one individual to try to crash this whole market uh, you know more than 50% in a day and you got that uh, tether uh, that's that looming doom I'll talk a little bit uh, later and USDC is, has a very big market cap as well so USDC as you know is fully backed and transparent and you know if you go to the website you can see the audits as well so I believe uh, they're trying their best to you know, bring transparency and stability and audits to this uh, stablecoin ecosystem. So USDC is a lot more transparent and trusted than Tether. So how to automate a smart hybrid stablecoin? So we're gonna use Uniswap and other DEXs to rebalance the treasury. Uh, so as soon as you put in, for example, you wanna have Freedom USDC, as we're gonna call this uh, stablecoin, Freedom USDC, you put in uh, maybe $50 worth of Ethereum, and then it goes to the Uniswap DEXs. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of gas fees if you use Ethereum, so we're gonna launch this on Polygon first probably. So once you go to maybe QuickSwap or Uniswap on Polygon, uh, we're going to automatically uh, trans, uh, you know, transfer that into that uh, particular uh, split. 9% uh, Ethereum, 40% Bitcoin, and 50% USDC, and put that into the smart contract that is the treasury smart contract. So once that is done, um, 
we're going to you know, talk a little bit more about that. But initial, we're going to make sure that split will happen and the people who have uh, provided that liquidity will be getting interest. So I'll talk a little bit uh, more about that model in a bit. And also uh, initial liquidity is done by stakers who lock for 30 to 90 days. So this smart contract where people will get the liquidity providers will get one or two percent of the fees of every transaction. Uh, they will have to lock it up for a certain amount of period and depending on how many days they lock they'll get a higher amount of APY. Uh, so the main problem with, uh, for example, uh, the initial anchor protocol is any, everyone could just you know, take out their money right away and especially the liquidity providers. But if we have a smart contract to auto lock it for a certain amount of time, there won't be a crazy bank run like this at all. And a lot more trust in the system because people know we've, you know, transparently on the smart contract on the blockchain, you can see it's at least 50% USDC. So this is the three main uh, bullet points I want to address. And let's take a look at how the smart contract will actually work uh, in real time with the liquidity providers and the stablecoin users. All right. So the liquidity providers, they lock their liquidity through our smart contract for 30 to 90 days. And depending on how much they lock and how long they lock, they'll get an APY from QuickSwap, Uniswap, Aave, these types of liquidity pools uh, that will automatically make sure we have that ratio in our treasury smart contract. And then with the liquidity providers, every time people transact on them, uh, maybe they repay and borrow on the smart contract of Aave, for example, there, there will be yield. And with that yield, it comes back to the smart contracts and also gives that money back to the liquidity providers, people who stake their uh, Ethereum or Bitcoin. And you know, once they unstake, they'll get the exact ratio of 40% Bitcoin, 50% um, USDC, etc. And then stablecoin users who keep on using our Freedom USDC, as we will call it, Freedom USDC, these stablecoin users uh, keep giving a 1% transaction fee to the liquidity providers at the same time. So the liquidity providers, they're getting double the money. So they're getting money from a suite of maybe three to four dApps of, you know, uh, quick swap kind of DeFi systems. They're getting money from here. Plus they're getting transaction fees. So uh, it pays to be a liquidity provider. And since they know it's backed by Bitcoin, Ethereum, and these large caps, uh, blue chip uh, coins, they know their money is relatively safe. So that's the very, very stable way, I believe, uh, to make sure this ecosystem is sustainable. Right. So worst case scenario, there is a worst case scenario. And, you know, with my knowledge of working in the financial industry at Visa card, I've been a developer, uh, one of the first developers since 2016 for smart contracts there. And I've worked at Amazon as a software engineer. There is always a worst case scenario and it happens every single time. If there's more than 10,000 users and you know, the mark, Mr. Market goes crazy like this, for sure the worst case scenario will happen. So what happens, for example, when Bitcoin plummets 90% in one day um, and Ethereum as well. And you know, other maybe the treasury uh, gets seized by the government at the same time. Uh, it's uh, I'm gonna tell you honestly. I mean, the hope is very very little. Even if the actual, for example, you know, real chance of all of this happening at the same time is very low, it can happen. So there is high risk in this, in a sense, but less risk than what happened with Anchor and Terra Luna, for example, because Bitcoin is you know so stable compared with others. So 90% in one day, um, you know, it can happen, but the percentage is very low. Um, and USDC that is, you know, uh, being backed by, you know, Coinbase and transparent and been audited before. Um, the chance that the US government will seize all of Coinbase's assets in a day, uh, that is very low as well as, uh, you know, as particular uh, probability. So 
And you know, everyone tries to pull out their liquidity at once, but the smart contract uh, is locking up their particular uh, liquidity automatically. And even as the owner of the smart contract, our company has no power over um, unlocking or giving back people the money because we're going to give up the keys. Uh, we're going to relinquish ownership of the smart contract. This will be an automatic vending machine. Uh, we have no uh, way of controlling per se. So that's that's going to be this uh, particular smart contract. So the USDC Treasury, um, this is probably the biggest risk, uh, to be honest. Uh, so that's why there is Bitcoin and Ethereum in the smart contract itself. So uh, the worst case scenario when US half of the assets on the smart contract is no longer valid and Coinbase has uh, been seized by the government. Uh, worst case scenario in US. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are on the smart contract and depending on how many people pull their money at once and how many people are allowed to take out their money, uh, this will still back up most of the dollar reserves. So that's, um, that's the way to mitigate as much risk as possible, having Bitcoin and Ethereum on the smart contract. And uh, looking at the algorithm and how much this is being used for Bitcoin itself in El Salvador and other countries like Panama, uh, the Bitcoin price will keep going up uh, continuously long term. And while this smart contract is long term being used, uh, people will get their money back at least. So that's why uh, we're using these uh, as algorithmic stablecoins compared to other altcoins that are a lot more risky. So flaws in the system. The biggest one, Chainlink, uh, Band Protocol, API3, you know, Winklink, all of these oracles, if they're all hacked at the same time, uh, that's going to be a problem. So uh, the way uh, Chainlink, um, you know, is the most trusted oracle in the industry and I trust them and I believe them. So I have very, very, um, you know, you know, little doubt that they will go under and they'll be hacked. But just in case we want to diversify and aggregate the data. So even if one Oracle fails, it will not stop the system. Like, you know, let the smart contract compare all of these Oracles, right? And then the second, the smart contract hacks. So, you know, re-entry attacks and other stuff. So we need to really open source this code for scrutiny, let other people copy the code and try their own experiment in this algorithmic, you know, stablecoin hybrid model that's backed by Bitcoin and Ethereum and also USDC that's transparent. So how do we mitigate the risk? Okay, a well, smart contract I've talked about being an open source, let everyone copy it and let other developers uh, improve it, of course, make the DAO for voting on the percentage changes, all right? So, you know, a lot of people will, you know, say, hey, you know, make Ethereum maybe 50%, maybe make, you know, other parts of the coins or the algorithmic stable coin part with you know, the adjustment a little larger or something like that. So the DAO, uh, the decentralized atomic organization has to be uh, very active. So I believe uh, this is going to be a big part of algorithmic or hybrid stable coins in the future. Uh, uses of other mixes of fully backed stable coins. Um, I think that will be another part of you know, seeing maybe CBDCs in the future or other ones as well. So best case scenario, right? This is the best case scenario. There's light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, if Bitcoin moons uh, in a couple of years slowly, you know, Bitcoin price keeps going up a little by little. And also stake, stakers benefit from increasing Bitcoin price as well. You know, slow withdrawals. You know, stakers getting an average of maybe 5% per month uh, with 1% transaction fees on DEXs, trading and withdrawals. You know, this would be like the perfect uh, stable coin and the perfect staking platform that is, you know, backed by the largest uh, blue chip uh, coins out there in the market, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So the looming doom. All right, Tether, I'm, I'm going to scare you guys. All right. So uh, there's Tether has a long list of scandals. You can take a look at this uh, as well. Uh, I believe probably in the next few years, uh, this will, you know, no, there is no lie or there is no uh, scandal that can, you know, fully be forever. 
Uh, the truth comes out like what happened with BitConnect before. So the crypto market as a whole will have a huge setback when uh, Tether goes under and who knows when it will go under. It, it might be years. Uh, Bernie Madoff has been doing this shit for years as well. So who knows? So um, with that, I want to keep giving you guys that rosy future, okay? Ah, uh, just let's focus on the rosy future for now. Like what can happen in the best case scenario. Don't look at Tether too much. Uh, it's just going to give you a headache. But, you know, having, you know, hybrid stable coins with a good future. I think this will really help out the industry and make uh, transactions and transparent and blockchain. You can, you can buy that cappuccino with Freedom USDC. I think this is going to be the real killer app uh, for transparent and decentralized economy and also commerce all right so let's take a look at the best case scenario and make sure this works all together and let's all experiment on this okay so i'm going to tell you guys a little bit about me and my company as well you know i thank you for you know coming and looking at this presentation but you know, I, I've been an engineer for over 10 years, uh, worked at Visa for a couple of years as a blockchain and, um, you know, mobile engineer as well as engineer at Amazon. So I have software experience six years in Silicon Valley. All right. So I've been hit with a lot of hacks, a lot of turmoil and being in the industry. I think I'm a little bit more humble than uh, Do Kwan. So uh, I've been uh, three world championships in blockchain uh, 2016. Uh, Coinbase Hackathon 17. I was number one in the world at the Visa World Hackathon and uh, 18. I was number three. So uh, there we go on uh, the World Crypto Economic Forum Hackathon. So I, I kind of know what uh, I'm talking about here. And I'm currently an uh, advisor, tech advisor in Korea as well. Other speaking engagements, I did uh, work with Metis as well. So this is our team with my co-founder Jesse Krieger and our other engineers and marketers and investors. So, you know, if you guys are interested in joining our team, send me an email as well. Uh, we'll be needing a lot of partnerships, a lot of people, and I think we're going to make an amazing team together and build the future of NFT, stable coins, DeFi, and smart contracts in general, the crypto world is going to be needing you and I want you guys to be a part of PowerFan. Uh, thank you very much and enjoy your day, rest of your day and join us in Telegram. Thank you very much.